Hey gang, David Shapiro here. Um, I'm actually doing some some research with uh, Bing, and so since Bing is new and not everyone has access to it yet, I wanted to share. So for some background, um, as many of you know, I am neurospicy, and I remember reading a article a few years ago about how n neurological signals propagate differently across the brains of people that are neurodiverse. Now I'm going to see if I can find this with Bing. Um, so I, I switched over to chat and it's like, okay, sure, blah, 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 blah. I used the wrong term, neural leakage, which apparently has to do with uh, blood brain barrier and other inflammation, et cetera, et cetera. So I used the wrong term. So I said, I think I used the wrong term. I was trying to find a scientific art article or paper that talked about how some individuals with ASD and or ADHD and other forms of neurodiversity have atypical signal propagation in their brains. Can you help me find such articles? Um, uh, to clarify if needed. Um, or just find some papers. Thanks. All right, so let's see if it'll help. Since I asked for scientific papers, I hope that it doesn't get offended. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to cancel it. A typical neural signal propagation, ASD, ADHD. So it looks like what it does is part of the steps is, uh, is it kind of simplifies the search terms to the most relevant. Um, let's see. One article that might be relevant is oscillatory neural networks underlying resting state attentional control and blah, 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 blah. Okay. This article suggests that ASD and A are associated with distinct alterations in large-scale oscillatory networks, which are groups of neurons that fire rhythmically together. These alterations may underlie the neurocognitive atypicalities in these disorders. Yes, that is probably relevant. So that's all cited in citation one and citation two. Another article that might be of interest, ADHD and ASD, uh, distinct patterns of inhibition-related uh, inhibition activation during go-no-go -go task. So uh, a go-no-go -go task is when you're waiting and you're trying to like have a flinch response to like push a button or not. Um, this article investigates brain activation patterns related to inhibitory control, which is the ability to suppress unwanted impulses or actions. The authors found that children with ADHD showed reduced activations in regions. Okay, that may, may not be as relevant. The Monash Autism, ADHD, Genetics, and Neurodevelopment um, the article suggests the project aims to identify common genetic variants. I hope these articles help. Um, I think the first article is the most relevant. So here's the search query. Um, I'm wondering if... Um, these atypical signals in the brain might also have anything to do with synesthesia and or certain types of neurogenic tinnitus. For instance, I've had multi-tonal tinnitus my entire life, which indicates to me it could be genetic um, or endogenous rather than um, an injury or disease. Um, so I'm curious if perhaps the tones I hear are actually neural signals leaking into my auditory neurons. Um, Obviously, I am not asking you to diagnose uh, anything, just looking for relevant scientific uh, literature. Okay, so let's see if it'll do that. It might not. Bing is pretty sensitive, um, and I uh, would not be surprised if it uh, ends the conversation. Okay, atypical neural signals, synesthesia, and tinnitus. Um, so let's see what it does. It's thinking. I understand you're wondering, okay, blah, blah, blah. Synesthesia is a condition. Okay, it's kind of talking through. Yes, I know. Um, it can be inherited or acquired um, and is more common in people with ASD. Okay, I didn't know that. So that's interesting. So tinnitus is common in neurospicy people. Um, the exact neural mechanisms are unclear, but some studies suggest it could be involved uh, increased connectivity or cross-activation between different sensory regions. Yes, yes, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so we're looking for, um, well, here, let's check out these. Let's see. Tinnitus is a perception of sound when no external sound source is present. 
can be caused by various factors such as damage to the inner ear, exposure to loud noise, aging, medications, or neurological disorders. It can also be associated with synesthesia, where some people experience visual or sens tactile sensations along with sound. Yes, I used to, um, if I'm really tired, I still get the, the um, tactile sensations where it actually has a grating feeling. Um, it's super unpleasant. Um, okay. So yeah, it looks like it looks like I remembered correctly, and Bing was able to help me find some of this stuff. Um, let's see the neural mechanisms of tinnitus, a perspective from functional the fMRI imaging from Zhang et al. The article reviews how functional magnetic resonance imaging, um, which measures brain activity based on blood flow changes. Okay, blah blah blah. Okay, so anyways, long story short, um, it looks like Bing is actually pretty good. The fact that it can cite sources in line is super powerful. Um, I'm actually really happy with this because this is something that I read like years ago and I've just kind of revisit this idea every now and then. And so uh, as, as you're probably familiar with, trying to find scientific papers on the internet can be a real pain. So this is, this is pretty incredible. Um, and I think it says three of six because that's how many uh, responses we get. I'm hoping that bit, that Microsoft is able to, to keep Bing um, on track. Speaking of, folks at Microsoft, I know you're watching this. If you want any help, just let me know. Um, happy to happy to jump on a call with you guys and provide some advice. Anyways, we'll call it a day there. Um, I'm going to read some of these articles and figure out what's wrong with my brain. All right, talk later.